So it looks like Mike Perry vs. Cobb and Lee might be in the works. Kevin Lee tweeted up Mike Perry week 5 in July 10 for what an added Sean Shelby and Dana White. He followed up with them moving to 170 pounds for the foreseeable future. Oliveira can have the lightweights. We'll get back to that later if these guys do end up fighting in the future. Who do you guys think takes the W? Post your predictions in the comments section. It's on. It's going. reached out and I was like, I looked at my phone and I said, Ric Flair wants to call me? And he's like, what's up, brother? And, you know, in typical Ric Flair fashion, you know, and he's just, like, he's like, man, I'm getting a lot of media buzz right now because there was some guy who kicked someone's ass in the UFC <laughs> and then started using one of my lines. And, and then, you know, we started talking about a little bit of stuff. To be the man, you got to beat the man. So it was just so cool. I was a pro wrestling fan, especially growing up. Uh, Ric Flair, Diamond Dallas Page, Austin, uh, Steve Austin, uh, The Rock, man, those those are the guys that I you know looked up to and wanted to be like. And then now here I am getting to do it in a in a real fashion in front of millions of people. So to have have a friend, a new friend like Nick Flair's or Ric Flair is really cool. And uh, we'll see. I'll try to keep on making him proud. Would your would your finishing move involve something maybe off the top turnbuckle like you did? In Abu Dhabi, what do you think? Some type of swanton bomb type splash? I, I think so, yeah. I didn't mention, I did not mention him because obviously the biggest figures in pro wrestling were the four or five that I just mentioned. But also one of my favorites was Rey Mysterio Jr. The, 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 the smaller guy, uh, the, the Mexican warrior, uh, used to just do the crazy flips and all the crazy acrobatic stuff. Uh, I by no means fancy myself an acrobat like that but yeah my finishing move would be something that got some oohs and ahs out of the crowd happy mother's day <laughs> sick right <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, it's so raw. <laughs> Alex Morono reflects on the victory over Donald Cerrone at UFC Vegas 26. He write on Instagram post. Got the W. What a crazy week. Honored to share the co-main in the octagon with Cowboy. One of the baddest motherfuckers to ever do it. Couldn't be more proud to bring this victory back to Texas. The support is always so much appreciated. Huge shout out to my coaches Matthew Wald and Saves Aloud keeping me in line in Laser Focus 19-7. Jeff Neal releases a statement since his loss to Neil Magny. He write on an Instagram post. Well there goes another one lol. Felt really good in the first round and the second one was close. Even in defeat I'm still proud of this one as well. It was another honor to step in there with another crafty veteran in Neil Magny. I'm probably gonna take some time away and take care of my health a little bit. My body hasn't been right since I got sepsis last year. I've been dealing with off and on sickness and severe lack of energy since then. 
I almost pulled out of this fight last week because I was vomiting diarrhea for three days, and after having to rehydrate and replenish what my buddy lost I found myself sitting at 208 pounds exactly one week before weigh-ins, but I got issues, so I said fuck it and cut 37 pounds in a week anyway. Lol probably a super dangerous stupid decision, but nothing great ever gets done trying to play it safe. Gonna go on my first real vacation to Hawaii next week, come back, get some blood tests done to figure out what's going on with my body, and I promise you I will be back with a vengeance. Thanks to all my coaches and teammates who helped my through this camp. And thanks again to Neil Magny. That was a solid veteran performance. Tony Ferguson himself will be wanting to to stop the skid, Mike. What does he do? Yeah. What, does it, what, what has he got to do to change what has been happening to him over his last two fights? To put it bluntly, he's going to become a better fighter, right? Because Tony Ferguson goes out there and entertains the masses, but he is kind of sloppy, you know? There's a lot of fighters that... He wins through sheer heart and toughness a lot of the time. In the first round, he gets his ass kicked a lot, part of my language. Yeah. He, get, he takes a lot of punishment, but then his opponents kind of, uh, uh, you know, they, they get tired. I'm not saying it's only because of tiredness, that's the reason he beats him, but he does wear them down and he takes a lot of shots. Like, remember the fight against Lando Venata? Lando nearly killed the guy in the first round. And then when he fought Kevin Lee, again, he was mounted at the end of the first round, takes a lot of damage, but he's just so damn tough that he gets through it, he weathers the storm and he turns it around. Now, that's well and good. That's beautiful to see and fans love it and the arenas go wild. But it's not good for the chin, it's not good for the brain and it's not conducive to a long career. And I think that's what we're seeing. We're starting to see that style of his catch up with him. And I say that again with respect. Tony Ferguson de de deserves everybody's respect. He does. Mm -hmm. He's a true warrior. But you can only fight like that for so long. Just engage it. I thought he caught up with him. And Charles Oliveira, he kind of looked like a spent force. So he's taking a little time away. He's training with Freddie Roach. He's trying to clean some things up. He's got to get knee to. He's got to get tighter. You know, Benil Dariush can cry. The man can bang, and he started to knock people out. So Tony Ferguson's got to be careful, but uh, it's a tough fight for him. Make no mistake. UFC fighter Alan Jubin announced his retirement in a social media post. I'd like to officially announce my retirement from MMA. Fighting in the UFC have given me everything I have today. I would not change a single thing from my journey, because I got to live my dream, and not know what was next. My coaches, my teammates, those of you that were a part of this, I appreciate you so much. Thank you to my supporters and even my opponents along the way. Injuries, age and life have shown me that it's time. If I can't compete to my fullest, then I won't. So I'll focus my time now on broadcasting, where I can still share my passion and knowledge for the sport with, with everyone at home. Thank you to everyone for all the love over the years. I look forward to becoming a staple in the sport from this and now as well.